Hi! Clips Recap here. Today, I'm going to explain a scientific, fantasy movie titled Eternal Sunshine of a Spotless Mind. Kindly readjust and enjoy yourself. Thank you. The movie begin with the main character Joel Barish, waking up from sleep late in the day. He goes out and finds his car vandalized on the side and angrily goes away leaving a note for the person telling them thank you for vandalizing his car. He goes to a subway station and was soliloquizing until he begins to run to meet up with his train heading to Montauk. When he got to Montauk, he's seen seated at the seashore, drawing on his journal, digging out sand. He sees a girl in an orange sweatshirt and wishes to meet someone new, due to the fact that he's incapable of making eye contact with a woman. He then goes to a cafeteria and sees the girl again. He writes on his journal that why does he fall in love with every woman he sees that shows him the least bit of attention. He goes to the train station and the girl on orange sweatshirt comes around. She stares at him and waves to him, and he waves back. Inside the train, she exchanges pleasantries with him and goes to sit closer to him. She asks him where is he headed to, and he says the Rockwell Center. She tells him that he looks familiar and tells him about a store where she normally goes to for the last five years. She tells him that he can't recognize her because she changes the color of her hair often. Later on, she sniffs in her inhaler and tells him that her name is Clementine and he tells her that he's called Joel. They continue talking and he tells her she's a nice person and she seemed annoyed at it. She angrily tells him that she don't need nice and don't need herself nor anyone else to be nice to her. After some time, she apologizes for the way she behaved and tells him that she's a little out of sort today and he smiles, she then punches him and tells him to take care. He meets her outside walking home and offers to take her home in his car. They got to her apartment and she offers to give him a drink. He goes into her room and finds her collection of toys and looks at them while she prepares the drinks. He tells her more about himself and she lays on his chest and asks him to go on a picnic with her the next night and he agrees. He decides to go home and she begs him to stay but he refuses. She then writes her number on his hands and tells him to call her immediately he gets home. He goes out, and she tells him to wish her a happy Valentine's Day when he calls, he smiles, and goes away. He gets home and immediately calls her, she asks him what took him so long and he said he just walked into his apartment. She reminds him of their picnic the next day and bids him good night. At night the next day she takes him to a glacier where they play and look at the skies the whole night. At dawn he drives her to her apartment while she was asleep. He gently wakes her up and she asks him if she could come over to his house to sleep and he agrees. She then goes out to get her toothbrush. After a fight with Clementine, Joel goes to meet her and after he tried calling her severally, but she's changed her number, he meets her and she looks at him like a stranger and kisses another guy while he stood there watching. He goes back home with his gift to meet Rob and Carrie. Carrie tells him to let her go before getting into an argument with Rob and goes away. Rob gives Joel a letter that was sent to Clementine, and he discovers that Clementine has had her memories of him erased by a firm called Lacuna. He asks Rob for more details about the firm and at dawn goes in search of the firm. He locates it and goes in, he introduces his self to the receptionist and tells her that he has an appointment with Dr. Howard. She then hands him a form for him to fill while waiting for the doctor. She takes him to meet Dr. Howard and shows him Joel's letter, and he apologizes to him telling him that he shouldn't have seen the letter. Joel asks him if this is a hoax but he says no. He tells him that Clementine wasn't happy with the situation of their relationship and she wanted to move on without any worry, and they provided that opportunity for her. Joel goes home and thinks about the conversation with the doctor and goes to meet him the next day to perform the same procedure on him as well. The doctor tells him to go home and park everything he owns that has some association with Clementine. He tells him that the items will be used to create a map of Clementine in his brain. He goes home and packs all the belongings that has an association with Clementine and goes back to the firm. Dr. Howard takes him to meet Dr. Stan, an experienced and skilled brain technician, and he'll be the one handling his case. Dr. Howard interviews Joel ahead of the procedure while he records a tape for Lacuna Firm. He tells Dr. Howard that he's here to erase Clementine. 
He asks Joel to tell him about Clementine. He tells him that he met her in a beach wearing an orange sweatshirt. Howard tells him that by morning after the procedure, all the memories of Clementine would have withered and disappeared. Joel asks him if there's a risk of brain damage, and he explains the procedure further to him. Dr. Stan scans his brain and tells him that what he's doing is creating a map on his brain and puts one of the objects he brought about Clementine in front of him and tells him to focus on the memories about the object with Clementine and does it for all the items he brought. After the procedure, he goes home with Dr. Stan following him in his van and waits outside. He changes into his pajamas and takes the pills given to sedate him. He switches off the lights and falls asleep while Dr. Stan brings in his machines into his apartment. They put him on bed and fixes the machine on his head. He began with the last time he saw Clementine when she came back at 3 o'clock and wrecked his car. He calls her pathetic and she says she was just tipsy and he calls her a whino. They get into an argument and she goes away angry. While Joel follows her apologizing, Stan immediately deletes the memory. In this state of hypnosis, he could hear Stan and Patrick conversations from the real world. Patrick tells Stan about his girlfriend and tells him that he stole a pair of her panties. He tells Stan her name and how he's been using her memory and Joel's memories to seduce her and Stan yells at him, telling him it's unethical and eventually laughs at him. The secretary Mary comes to the apartment and they spend some time drinking. Patrick calls Clementine and while talking Joel starts to trace his voice from his memories. He asks Stan if he could leave for a while to go see Clementine and he refuses but Mary tells him to go that she'll help Stan out. Stan and Mary lies down beside Joel eating and smoking. Patrick goes to meet Clementine and sees her crying. After consoling her she asks him to accompany her to the glacier and he agrees after seeking permission from Stan. He gives Clementine a Valentine's gift of a jewelry and she thanks him. While Stan and Mary have sex, Joel re-experiences his memories of Clementine as they get erased. As he reaches earlier, happier memories, he realizes that he don't want to forget her and goes off track from the machine's readings. His mental projection of Clementine suggests that Joel hid her in memories that do not involve her. This halts the procedure and Stan tries to bring him back on track but couldn't. Mary suggests they call Dr. Howard. He calls Howard and tells him the address of the apartment. He tells Mary to go home but she refuses and insists on staying. Howard comes to the apartment and Mary opens the door for him. Surprised, he looks at Stan and asks Mary what's she doing here. She tells him she wanted to understand the procedure better as it is important for her job. Howard checks Joel's brain map and gets the location of Joel and he coughs and opens his eyes but couldn't move his body. Howard hypnotizes him and gets him back on track after restarting the procedure. Stan tells Howard to go back home, and as he was about leaving Stan recalls him telling him that Joel has gone off the track again. Joel comes to his last remaining memory of Clementine the day they first met, on a beach in Montauk. As the memory crumbles around them, Clementine tells Joel to meet her in Montauk. Stan goes outside leaving Howard and Mary alone inside, and after some intimate talks with her she comes close to him and kisses him. She tells him she's in love with him, but Howard tells her that he has a wife and kids and tells her that they can't do this while kissing her Howard's wife arrives, and from the street, sees them kissing through the window. Furiously she switches on her car and goes away with Howard and Mary chasing her. She tells Howard to tell Mary the truth, that Mary and Howard previously had an affair, and Mary had her memories erased by Howard and goes away leaving them there. Disgusted Mary goes to Howard's office and search for her file and finds it. She plays her tape on the procedure carried out on her. Mary steals the lacuna records and mails them to the patients, including Joel and Clementine. Joel wakes up, his memories of Clementine erased. He impulsively goes to Montauk and meets Clementine again on the train station. They are drawn to each other and go on a date to the frozen Charles River in Boston. Joel drives Clementine home and Patrick sees them, realizing they have found each other again. Joel and Clementine receive their lacuna records and listen to their tapes. They are shocked by the bitter memories they had of each other, but agrees to try again. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Turn on post on notification to watch more of our interesting videos. Thank you.